Good morning and welcome to Karen Reed. I'm sitting here in my living room in South Berwick. I'm glad to be with you again. I have two books again today. Uh, one is written by Jane Cohn Fletcher. If you remember her, she's the children's librarian here in South Berwick. So it's very special to have her book on again today. It's called Farmer Will, and it's about her son, Will. Okay. Farmer Will. And you remember that Jane has written the words and also painted the pictures. Our children wore this book out, so it has a lot of tape and creases and all kinds of things. Will loves farm animals. He loves to look at them in books. He loves to say, nay, moo, ba, and oink. Will has a special farmer's hat and his own little toy horse, cow, sheep, and pig. He calls his horse, Orsi, his cow, Dow, his sheep, Ba, and his pig, Oink Oink. Will's family calls him Farmer Will. Farmer Will is a good little farmer. Every morning he rounds up Orsies, Dow, Ba, and Oink Oink and takes them outside. Outside and so they can stretch out. Then Farmer Will feeds them and waters them. And you can see him giving them crackers and then squirting the hose across the yard so they can stick their nose and mouth in it and get the water coming out. and ask them, do you want to play? Nay, moo, ba, oink, oink, yahoo. And they are playing. So they play hide and seek, and you can see the cow behind the quilt on the line, the horse behind the scarecrow, the sheep behind the tree, the pig behind the flower pot. And they play catch me if you can. Wee, nay, moo, ba, oink. So 
Sometimes they play stomp in the mud and run through the sprinkler. That looks like fun. And they always play Ring Around the Rosy until they all fall down. Then when they are all played out and very, very tired, Farmer Will gathers up his animals and carries them back inside. So they can take a rest with the happiest little farmer in the whole wide world. Okay, thank you, Jane, for a wonderful book. The next book is one you might be familiar with. It's a favorite, Where the Wild Things Are. I found out some things about the writer, Maurice Sendak. He was the first one to write in children's books about things that were scary. He said, I'm not ever going to lie to them. And so he included in his book things that are a little scary. And I think you'll like this book because of that. Where the Wild Things Are. And he wrote it and he illustrated it. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind And another, he's chasing the cat and the dog. His mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. And grew. He's grinning, he's enjoying this. Can you see his grin? He's happy. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max. And he sailed off through night and day. And in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. And 
when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into their yellow eyes without blinking once, all of them, and they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. and made him the king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. There he is with his scepter. Let the wild rumpus start. They're dancing and they're hanging from the trees and swinging. They have him on their shoulders. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where somebody loved him best of all. And then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, No. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and shared their, showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. and sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. And into the night of his very, very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. 
and there's no picture for that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the books today. I enjoyed being with you. Take care of it until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.